Students at CLU have a lot to worry about, whether it's the cost of food, school materials, or the rising cost of rent. Even the tuition of the university is a lot to handle, with the school raising its yearly tuition to almost $40,000, and with room, board, and other fees combined, the total cost of attendance is over $56,000. In order to afford the steep price range of an education, students attain jobs, sometimes on campus and other times not. With many students without cars, students rely on the King County metro system to take them to far destinations. One would think that such an expensive school would provide ORC cards for its almost 8,000 students. And it does, to some extent, but the options are limited. When talking with Seattle U students, I noticed a common pattern of discordance with the current renting system of ORC cards. Students are able to rent out the passes at the hub desk located in the student center, but only till 11 p.m. or till 9.30 a.m. the next morning which means if you rent out the pass later than 9.30 a.m., you cannot have the pass for a full 24 hours. I like ORCA passes. I don't, I wish that for the S, for SU's ORCA pass system that I could like check them out for longer or like not have to return them mm -hmm. um, like right on time. Like it's just kind of limited and sometimes like you'll go and they won't have any or like yeah. I'm just super jealous of you, Dub, because they've got the, you know, like their student ID is literally an Orca card. Like they can go anywhere whenever they want yeah. on the bus. So For one, you have to return your Orca pass that you rent out at like 10 o'clock every morning. And that's frustrating if you want to like head outside of Seattle, maybe go back home for an evening. Only 70 cards are available at the hub desk for almost 8,000 students. Prior to last year, there are only 50 cards. Hanea Simpson, a sophomore at SU, remembers a distinct moment where she was traveling with a group of people and could not use the Seattle Orca Pass renting system because of the limited amount of cards. On campus, and we were going to an event that we had at the Crocodile, mm -hmm. and it was on a weekend. It's, I think it's At the University of Washington, students have an option to pay $84 per quarter, which allows them access to unlimited rides on the Metro Transit, light rail, streetcar, and ferries. Seeing this palpable difference between student approval of the BASPASS -Bas system from University of Washington and CLU students, I wanted to get down to the bottom of why CLU has such a limited bus pass program. I talked to the transportation supervisor, Whitney Wedge, and the executive director of Seattle Public Safety, Craig Berklet, and was surprised to find out that CLU used to have a similar bus pass program to University of Washington until 2015. At point, we had a passport program, which is essentially, it's an all-in. Uh, you can ride on any mode of transportation um, and Metro gave us a pretty good rate on that but we had about 700 or a little over 700 mm -hmm. of our students mm -hmm. that actually participated in that program. In fact public safety even discussed bringing back the program this last summer but did not do so because of the high cost. Public safety then went on to describe their current org pass program which students have to qualify for depending on their income and if they work for King County Public Health. If they qualify, they'll be charged a discounted rate. Students then have to front load the money and turn in receipts, and the university does a matching subsidy where they pay half of the fares. Although public safety claims the program is beneficial for students, less than 350 CLU students use the program. Students who have complaints or concerns about CLU's current bus pass system can contact Public Safety, the Sustainability Committee, or Student Government. As for now, a stronger communication between the student body and Public Safety might be necessary. This is Natalie Monahan signing off on the Red Hawk Reel.